you know, we had a couple of days to reflect on it, a couple cold, long, hard days to think about this one. Our Niners lost Sunday night football, 30 to 28, heartbreaking fashion. Aaron Rodgers just stole our soul. Jose, how are you doing? Well, I'm glad we took a couple of days to finally record because if we would have had our immediate reaction, I don't know how well it would have been. Uh, but you did mention that Aaron Rodgers stole our soul there. At, at least we weren't the first ones to get Aaron Rodgers before. Um, when I don't know about you, but whenever I saw 37 seconds left, I saw they were only down by one. I was like, did they leave too much time for Aaron Rodgers? And of course, three plays later, We knew the answer to that question. Yes, it was too much time, even with no timeouts. And every single attempt was to Devontae Adams and right to the middle of the field. That still was enough for Aaron Rodgers to get the Packers into field goal range. And Mason Crosby made that 51-yarder look super easy, just like he has his whole career. But, I mean, I kind of want to talk about a little bit about that second half. Didn't get off to a great start again, which is uh, it's worrying to see that for back to back games, we got off to really slow starts um, against a team like the Packers. You can't really do that and expect to win. But the fact that we were up late and probably should have won this game um, kind of speaks volumes to me that this team could rally, you know, against anybody. It's all about timing with that offense, but the timing needs to just come a little bit sooner. Everyone needs to be on the same page literally as soon as yeah. kickoff happens and and we haven't been been able to see that the past couple of games which is kind of worrisome to me i have a fix for that timing let's get ahead of drives let's get ahead of downs the fact that our running game has been this bad is the biggest problem that's why the rest of the offense has that trickle down effect you can't just consistently be having drive start with second and ten third and eight two yards at a time on the running game averaging two to three yards per carry it's a very worrisome trend. Now, Elijah Mitchell, he missed this game, obviously had a shoulder injury beforehand and got ruled out. So Trey Sermon, it was his time to step up. Now, I am worried that our third rounder didn't really look up for the task. If you start in fantasy, you got saved by a late touchdown, thankfully. But other than that, it was kind of a very unimpressive performance. You loved him to just grab the reins and just run with it. But that just didn't happen. So I think it's very likely that Elijah Mitchell's back there again. And hopefully he has a more successful day against Seattle than he did against Philly. Now, Philly, obviously, we just saw it tonight here, Monday Night Football. Their running game got a little bit exposed. So it's like now it's starting to think maybe that front isn't as good as we thought it is. I mean, we did have to go against Brandon Graham when he was healthy and on the field. So you can factor that one in. I I think the biggest thing that I think right away we just got to get into, Jimmy Garoppolo, man, (laughs) because – Twitter has been insane. How is it? And I know it wasn't the game winning drive. Obviously it wasn't the game winning drive, but how is it that a guy leads what should have been a game winning drive? 95% of the time, 99% of the time is a game winning drive. And I have to go to my Twitter timeline and hear how much that he cost us the game. If I'm putting my, what costs us the game rankings defense, that is what costs us game. I felt like we, didn't stop Aaron Rodgers at all. There was a couple drives, sure, you could factor in. But for the most part, it felt like Aaron Rodgers was doing whatever the hell he wanted to to us, and especially in that 37 seconds. If you have a lead with 37 seconds, I don't even want to hear about this. You should have went down. You ran a play with 12 seconds on the clock. No, that doesn't matter. (laughs) That really doesn't. The point is you lead with the team having to drive across the field on you in less than a minute on the clock. I don't care even the fact that they have a Hall of Fame quarterback. That should be enough for an NFL team. That should be enough. And the fact that we couldn't do a damn thing to stop Devontae Adams, who we knew the ball was going to, is just disgraceful. And, you know, obviously, D'Amico Ryans is taking his fair share of lumps on this one, too. And I think that that's rightfully earned because that should have been your main priority going into that drive. That should have been the only priority going into the drive. And it wasn't. I, I don't know if D'Amico is going to be able to correct this and it's tough for a contending team to have a new defensive coordinator going in. it. I don't know if Robert Saul would have been up for the task last night, but at bare minimum, send a blitz because if we get to Aaron Rodgers once, once that's game over. No, I completely, I'm so glad you brought up D'Amico Ryan's there. We have to remember this is barely, that was barely his third game calling plays uh, full time for the defense. So we have to give it some time. It seems so easy, right? Just pressure three and the rest of the eight guys just fall back and don't let any big plays happen. 
But with, when you're playing in a caliber, uh, a caliber quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, who's just done this time after time, season after season, opponent after opponent, we've seen this so many times, it doesn't work. You're right. They should have put a little bit more pressure on Aaron Rodgers. I mean, even from the beginning of the game, it seemed like they just couldn't get to Rodgers at all, which uh, that's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to beat yeah. you know, any good quarterback when you're not bringing that much pressure. Okay. One sack. I didn't feel any presence throughout the game from, yeah. I know yeah. D Ford was out there. I think Armstead officially on the record had the sack. Bosa was being a presence early on, but kind of faded off there in the second half. Kinwa gets a little bit of a push, but two, we're on these big chunk running yards too. four or five yards, Aaron Jones, four or five yards, DeAndre Swift, Miles Sanders gashing us a little bit. And between the run defense, the pass defense, it's just all coming together. And I hate to say it. I, I really do. I, I don't think we're a Super Bowl team, not because of our quarterback, but our cornerback situation. Yeah. Look at this, dude. I mean, Demo, he's he's going to be a stud. Don't get me wrong. He is going to be a stud one day. I love what I'm seeing from Dimidor Lenore. But sitting here today, that ain't it, bro. That ain't it. Emmanuel Mosley had a decent showing in his return. Uh, Josh Norman, obviously, he's, he's out this week. Apparently a bruised lung. A bruised lung. That sounds like the most 49ers injury that I've seen in a while. A bruised lung. And yes, I don't I haven't seen any urgency to sign. I don't know. Screw it. At this point, what are we waiting for? Let's just sign Richard Sherman. I th- we just need a veteran. A veteran presence in that defensive corner. I don't care if he's slow. I, I think that at least the instincts there would be more appropriate because I, I felt like Aaron Rodgers was picking in part these guys because just that sheer experience level more than anything, not just athletic ability, coverage skills, just that veteran knowledge to hit that back shoulder throw to the Devonte Adams, which was just killing us for a little bit there. Those penalties, those defense DPI calls that were just racking up towards the end of the first half. I feel like that doesn't happen to a veteran unit. And I feel like that doesn't happen to a veteran like it, Richard Sherman, or hell, I'll give Josh Norman his due. If he was on the field, I think that he would have been uh, more up to the task than the other two guys. But on the bright side, let's think of it this way, I guess. We expected them to lose this game, right? We go back to our preseason record predictions. We expected them to lose this game. I think just what hurts more about it is just knowing that we should have won this game in the long run. No, I completely agree. I mean, we knew – we knew this was at the real revenge game from that 2019 season NFC championship game, right? Because they did play last year, but you know, half the Niners were like an IR. It was a Thursday night game. It wasn't, it didn't feel like a revenge game, right? We knew green Bay was going to run with that game. This game was the one that really felt like a revenge game for the green Bay Packers, which is why I circled that as a loss when we, when he, when we did our regular season predictions and you know, it did end up happening, but like you said, it just steams a little bit more knowing that we had the lead with 37 seconds left and we didn't win the game. Um, but at, at the end of the day, I think you brought up a good point with the secondary. We've always said this for the past couple of seasons, everything about this defense is great, except for that secondary. It's either injury. It's either just bad performances by some of the cornerbacks, you know, Jaquaski Tart and Jimmy Ward, they're going to do what they're going to do. They're really, really solid back there. And not, and to make matters even worse, we lost one of our rotation guys probably for this week as well. K1 Williams went down as well. So we're just getting thinner and thinner at that position week after week. And I, I just don't know when the bleeding is going to stop. I just hope we get somebody that could just stay healthy um, I thought the signing of Josh Norman was actually decent. He, you know, went up against Devontae Smith and had to go up against Devontae Adams early on in this game. He was doing okay, but then he went down. So I think that's literally the biggest concern for this team right now, just how it's been the past couple of seasons. This secondary just needs to stay healthy and they need to play together as a unit because if you're bringing in just a bunch of other guys week after week from different practice spots, then it's always going to be a really tough challenge for even guys like Jimmy Ward to really have that communication back there and be able to stop some of these crazy aerial threats, which we're going to see a lot of, by the way, in this division. Here's, Here's a story in the line that no one is talking about right now. You want to know how many turnovers we have on the season, Jose? You want to know how many we have? Take a guess. Well, (laughs) maybe a little bit higher, but you're not too far off. Two. Two. We have two on the season. The entire game, I was just waiting for someone to make a big play, someone to step up, be clutch, and make that moment to seal the game. It never happened. Best thing that we had happen for us 
was the Packers deciding to not go for it on fourth down. Because I tell you what, if they would have went for it on fourth down there, I think they would have got it. I think they could have sealed the game right there and that comeback drive from Jimmy doesn't even happen. But we got fortunate there. We got bailed out by Matt LaFleur wanting to kick the ball rather than let Aaron Rodgers run it on fourth down again. And in the long run, it didn't matter. You know, we you haven't really talked about it much. What, what do you think about the Jimmy stuff? I mean, you saw Twitter all the same too. You've probably seen the articles and everything. How much blame do you think Jimmy really gets on this one? I mean, maybe a like 5% blame if we're putting it like on a 100% scale. Obviously, the defense gets the majority of that. But I mean, obviously, he could have gone to a better start, right? If he gets off to a better start, maybe things don't get out of hand early. And then we don't have to, you know, come back and climb this big, climb ourselves out of that big hole. But at the end of the day, he still puts you in a position to win, which is what he's there to do. He made the game winning drive. That was the game winning drive. There shouldn't have been anything else. And that's the win right there. He did what he was supposed to do. You know, he's not playing defense. He's not playing strong safety. He's not playing middle linebacker. He did what he was supposed to do. So no, I'm not going to put that much blame on him. And for the people that are saying to put Trey Lanson, Lanson, just please take a look around the league and look the performances of some of these rookie quarterbacks. You don't want a rookie quarterback in these tough situations, even with this Niner roster and this Niner offense it's still so hard to ask a rookie quarterback to just go in and then just play lights out football against these NFL defenses it's just not gonna happen what's the expectation if we do that what are we playing for if we're doing that is are we literally just saying you know what we're not a championship team anyway so we might as well just let the rookie play pack it in if we finish I don't know nine and eight eight and nine whatever doesn't really matter I feel as though we have Jimmy. We've already committed the money to the Jimmy, but just play out the season. And if it doesn't work, then that's where you, Trey Lance comes into play. I don't think that anything that Kyle Shannon is doing by having Trey Lance is really costing the team. In fact, as much as we're talking like this is a doomsday situation, we are two and one on the year. We have to remember that we're two and one and we should have won that game. Now it could spiral on us quick. Let's face it. The next two weeks we face Seattle and Arizona. We could very easily be two and three by the end of that stretch. And if by if we're going two and three into the bye week, then okay. And Jimmy's played horrible. You could talk me into it. You could maybe convince me that that's maybe the route we have to go. But I'm telling you, he has to look absolutely terrible. We get blown out in both games. Don't stand a chance. And I don't think that's going to happen. I'm going to say right here, I don't think that's going to happen. At bare minimum, we are probably going to split this one. So, okay, we go into the bye week, we're three and two, not great, but that's kind of about where we were kind of like talking about our threshold anyway. Trey Lance, even if we want to put him out there right away too, are we just going to put the rookie out there for a potential playoff run? You know, like I've seen more than enough bad quarterback play to know to when to embrace the good times, know when to embrace uh, when we have a quarterback that's at least capable on the field. And I feel like too many um, in the faithful have like forgotten what it's like to have Brian Hoyer and how, how have we forgotten? We literally had Nick Mullins and CJ Beathard on the field last year. How quick are our memories here? We're, we're in a position to win these games with a quarterback that whatever you say about Jimmy, he's gritty. He's, he's a competitor that even bouncing back after that fumble to lead that drive is everything that I like and respect about Jimmy Garoppolo. And you know what's going to kill me next year? Because I know Jimmy's not going to be on the seat next year. I I know that's not going to happen. I bet that he's going to be on, whether it's the Giants, Steelers, Washington, you name it, he's going to do well for that team. They're going to be in a position to win a lot of games. And that's not a shot at Lance, because I do believe in Lance long-term, but it's going to feel very dirty to think that he's winning for another team on NFL Sundays knowing kind of all the shit that he's gotten from our fan base, the news media. He's definitely the best quarterback we've had in the last 10 years. I'm just going to say it. No, he's better than Colin Kaepernick. I'm going to say he's, he did a lot more than what Alex Smith did in his Niners career. If I'm being completely honest, I mean, the guy took us to a Super Bowl, but I mean, yeah, just going for, just going forward, the, these, these next couple of games you meant you touched on it. It's just going to be crazy. I mean, especially this next, this week four game against Seattle at home. If the Niners could win this game, I'm, I think it puts Seattle out of the race to win the division. If I'm being completely honest, that'll put them at one and three. They've suffered a couple of pretty bad losses. If I'm being completely honest, one at home to Tennessee, 
and that and they would just look terrible in the second half against Minnesota. So if the Niners could just find a way to win this game at home and almost just get rid of Seattle early on in the season and then just move on to Arizona and just focus on these big games against Arizona and the couple against Los Angeles, that would be great. But this, they still have Russell Wilson. As long as they still have Russell Wilson, I'm going to be scared shitless of that Seattle team. I'm going to echo Bill Belichick here. We're on to Seattle. Faithful, let's move on from this. It was a great game. It was a heartbreaking game, but it's one we could bounce back from. Comment below what you thought, what where you really think the blame lies. We can talk about it a little bit. Uh, leave a like on this video. It helps the channel. helps the algorithm. We're posting Law Niners talk. We're here after every game talking about it. If you came over from the Instagram page, thank you. We really appreciate that one. Juju Talk Sports, Jose Corral, Go Niners. We'll see you next time.